especially for Sky City. Then we want to sell a package that includes tower. Of course, everyone wants to get there. And then maybe there's something else that we want to put it together that is better than if you buy a hotel plus tower plus this plus that, right? And you also want to maximize across your physical environment, your overall facility. That's why this presentation is every square meter counts. Because you're trying to maximize all the spaces you have in your property. So then they become revenue generation. You want those customers that come to your hotel. They are going to the restaurant. Imagine I have a full hotel or nearly full, but then the restaurant is quiet for breakfast because they're all going elsewhere, okay? So you're trying to maximize that. Uh, inventory management is about that, in my opinion. And I wanna separate into, say, two groups. The first one is your physical attributes, okay? So how you price your hotel, how you price your room. So you look at traditionally, and that's the old yield management, the old traditional hotel revenue management. The higher the floor, you expect to pay a higher price or higher room types. You start with your living room, your standard. People don't like to call standard anymore. Then you call your superior or your premium rooms or something else. You go online later and you will see all the hotels. The first room type that is the lowest rate, hardly ever you will see standard there because no one likes to buy something that is standard. So your living room, then the next category, and the next category, and the next, and the next, as many as you feel that is relevant to your business and to your market, to your customers. Arguably, you probably want to have two to three room types at least, unless you're like a backpacker and you want every room to be exactly the same and you just want to sell it, okay? Different products and different situations. If you're a resort somewhere in Fiji, you probably have 12 room types, villas, and sea view, and garden view, and balcony, no balcony, and all of those attributes, okay? So floor level suggests it's a better view. Yep. But if you're in New York, you're probably not getting much of a better view, right, in most cases. Uh, the view is there. Um, Try to get creative with the view, you know, so we call city view when there's no view. <laughs> yep, like that. Uh, room layout. Uh, this photo here is Sofitel Wellington. So those of, anyone has been to this hotel? No? Um, I'll tell a little bit more about this property, why I chose that one there. It's a beautiful hotel. Very nice. Beautiful, beautiful. And the story behind it, it's amazing. Uh, the room layout, so when I, when I joined the hotel here uh, in the years 2016, I think, for the opening of the building, I got there and we had like a three months to open the hotel. We were nearly finished. And in one of the meetings, we were looking at the room types of the property. And this is the facade and Baldwin Street over here. For those of you who know a little bit of Wellington, uh, the beehive is where he is. <laughs> that way, uh, Bolton Hotel, another pretty strong traditional five star hotel, right? Just here. But right here is a cemetery. <laughs> Hard to sell a room and say cemetery view. <laughs> so, Dealing with that, how, how, how would you then uh, describe the feature of all these rooms? Um, and then beyond that, there was, I think, a motorway, a highway or something. And then there was a beautiful hill. And there were, there were gardens on that side. Anyway, the point here I'm trying to make in terms of the room layout, uh, different rooms had different configuration. Not only the size, but of this room, you open the door and then you immediately you turn right and then you walk in and then the room opens. Good. And then you have another one that you walk straight up and then it, it's the room turning left with a lovely view. And another room, right? So, and this was a new build. 
right? So especially if you get a hotel that is a conversion, four points for the office floor. So the rooms are even flaming, right? And they are set up. One floor is one way, the other floor, the room looks that way, and it's complicated. And then you create lots of room types. And then there was a room, uh, was a particular room, and usually a new build, and then you're gonna have, let's just say this room here, is likely to be the same room type all the way across. Okay. We're building horizon, that's what we're doing. We have a room, we have beautiful rooms here, and then there are some funny rooms, because the building is, is on this shape over here, so those corner rooms, mm, how, do we, how do we create something that adds value, right, to this room type? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll I'll get to you in a second. Just a second. So this property here, then, I think the, the word, the corner rooms and these rooms here, uh, the team that was planning before I started, put the two rooms together, right? Uh, but this one here had an entrance, and there was a little, little space here that there was nothing there. And then going to the right, there was a big wardrobe, massive. And then the room going this side here with a big bed and it was long and getting a lovely view that you could put a chair by the window and sit there. Same room type. But clearly this one was like at least 1.5 the size of this room. And the way the layout was presented, it felt to me, it feels like not a suite, it's not a suite, but it's, it's definitely not the same. And in my mind, I think if you pay $300 and check into this room. And next time you pay 300 bucks and you check into this room because they are the same room type. They are completely different. And I'm sure next time you come, you'll say, can I get this from here? No, 106 or 506, not the 501. <laughs> right, and then you, you start realizing, it's just like seats. You, you come to the airline and you go, oh, I wanna take that seat whether that's window seat, or you have more leg room, or is away from the noise in the bathroom and all the rest, that's an opportunity, right? The room layout, the position on, on the building, the size, and then bathroom facilities, whether it has a, a tub, a bathtub or not, or a rain shower, or sometimes the bathroom. I don't know what these construction people do. Sometimes they make it more difficult, right, for us to sell later on the operating. Okay, sorry. Back to you. Like, uh, I think I've booked some uh, hotels about the right. They literally have this fifteen fifty dollar cost off, but because you're literally facing your window is facing another building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you go. Okay. Well, so you try to create the. Uh, and there was a time we were putting these wonderful pictures and the things that oh that doesn't look very nice. So let's not put this picture there. But then TripAdvisor came. People started taking pictures and putting reviews online, right? And then you go, oh, my hotel is great and all these beautiful views, but there was that, those other rooms that I didn't want to talk about, but customers started sharing. Booking.com reviews and Expedia reviews online, right? It just completely shattered that, you know, that situation. And it's like completely transparent. Cool, to the next one. So physical attributes. Now I said before, uh, Physical attributes, in my opinion, again, it's just like a plane and you compare the same seat to seat, leg room, no leg room, and that's that. It's limited, right? And sometimes you don't have much to do. The view is the view. There's no more you can do with the view from here or the layout of the building or whatever it is, right? So you're quite limited. This one here is where you start taking to another level, right? Those soft elements that has no limits. You create whatever you feel is going to be relevant and will add value to the customer experience and their perception of that service or this uh, um, facility that you provide, they're happy to pay for that price. So I'm just putting here some examples, okay? And especially in the five star one and a half, five star statements, okay? This is absolutely critical. And that becomes part of your identity. Uh, Club Lounge is an example. 
Some brands have a club lounge as their signature. Intercontinental, right? It's a five-star hotel. Soon there will be one down the harbor, commercial bay. They are planning to open uh, in December this year. That's why they are here, in 41. It's part of their signature. Every intercontinental, and you are a loyal customer, and you have their card, and every intercontinental you travel, <clears throat> a flight in Mainland was intercontinental for 10 years. So every time you travel, you expect to see, oh, where is your club lounge? Oh, it's on level three in this hotel. And we open at nine in the morning until five o'clock. Free canapes, free drinks and newspaper and Wi-Fi, computer stations, what have you. So you feel like this is part of the brand. It's included in your price, okay? Back in the day when I was in Crown Plaza, down here, uh, many years ago, I don't know if they have it today, but levels 27 and 28, the rooms, when you stay in those floors, they were exactly the same as all the other rooms. But if you stay in those, in those two top floors, it's considered a club floor, which means at the corner of level 28, let's say this is level 28 and 27, this little corner here, was their club lounge. So if you stay in these two floors, you have access to the club lounge. Seven. My room's probably not, yet, not ready until one, two o'clock. I can chill in that space. I can refresh and get a breakfast, right? And reply to some emails. So club lounges. Uh, let, let's start from the top. Room features. How, how do you decorate the room? Right. Um, at the Grand Hotel, four or five years ago, uh, we took a few rooms, about a hundred rooms and we invested a little bit of money just to fresh up the room, add a bit of color. We put some cushions, a throw on the bed, a nice artwork on the wall, and back in the day, Nespresso machines. When it was the thing. Nespresso machine, right? Yeah. Put the capsule. And we started charging 30, 40 dollars more oh. on the rate. Right, customers started to feel, oh, that's nice. The pictures look great, and if you go online after, you will see there's a grand, grand king and a grand deluxe king. That's what the difference is. $20, $40, depending on the day of the week and all that. So you create those features. The toiletries, oh, who don't love those toiletries, right? It's amazing. And it's great to play with those toiletries, right? Those signature, you, uh, you probably don't see because it's quite small. It's written the peninsula. So five-star hotels especially, I'll tell the story at the Grand Windsor. Grand Windsor, when we did the refurbishment and positioning from an old three-star building property into a nice five-star boutique hotel. The whole story of Grand Windsor, of course, is the castle. And then we wanted to bring this English heritage. So we designed the hotel and the elements that we created around the guest experience were relevant to the English heritage, culture, tea. So I went across the road on Queen Street, T2, was the shop down there, spoke to the manager, we sat down, we had many meetings, we looked at hundreds of options of teacups and colors and shapes and designs and all of it. And then we created four room types in the hotel, essentially, or four gem tones. Because again, Grand Windsor for the castle, the gems were uh, a way for us to reflect the heritage. I think tourmaline, aquamarine, emerald, and amethyst, I believe. Purple, amethyst? You're asking me? <laughs> I only know blue. Please write it down, look online, okay, <laughs> Grand Windsor. I believe they still have those four gemstones, right, as they are, um, 
uh, part of their service. So I went to T2 and I said, oh, let's take a look at this room. This room was blue, one of those, those stones. And then we, he brought boxes of blue color um, uh, sets, tea sets. And what about this? What about that? Anyway, in the end, uh, each individual room will have a, a different design. Maybe today changed. This is five, six years ago. But back in the day, it used to be specific designs of teacups and sets to each individual room to match that room type. Um, I went down to Nespresso when it used to be down Queen Street. I don't know if you guys remember. Used to have an espresso, uh, an espresso shop at the corner of Queen and Customs. Did the same thing. I went there and I said, I need a pink, I need a blue, a green, and a purple. And we Maybe it's still in the photos, maybe it's still in the hotel. I haven't been there since then. And then we had cups, aluminum cups of those colors for, for the coffee. So you designed the room features. Oh, I was talking about uh, the bathroom amenities. My God, the time. Uh, then we looked at, uh, we want to bring something really special because there are hundreds and thousands of different brands providing super luxury uh, amenities, right? From Bulgari to everything, right? Louis Vuitton and, and, and beautiful saint, and this one is this, this one is that, anyway, so we went. But I wanna find one brand that is very much British, right? Very much English in the, in the essence. And then we came across a brand, Flores. Take a look again, see if you see a description in the room either as a description in the features or pictures of the bathroom. We designed a beautiful box to go in the room. They were white, marble, and they had a, a brass top. And we measured the size of each of those bottles and how we wanted to present, and we gave to a supplier to custom make for us, right? Costed a fortune, but it was about that experience, right, for our customer. And then Flores, was the only, back in the day, five years ago, was the only brand that was um, approved by the Queen, by uh, Her Majesty, as being the one that truly represents the English uh, heritage. So you create that story. And when you talk about that story, and this is what your customers choose to stay in your hotel and pay for that price, okay? So your bathroom, wellness, exclusive access, Again, uh, if you book this room here, you have access to the club lounge, you book this room, we, have, we give you, do you guys understand turn down service? No worries, raise your hand if you don't, I can explain. Yes, what is turn down service? Turn down service usually happens in five star hotels, anywhere between five and seven o'clock in the evening, is when housekeeping goes to your room, and then they close the blinds, okay? They dim down the lights, they make sure the bathroom is okay. Do you need an extra towel, clean your rubbish bin, put a little chocolate on your bed? All right, so it's preparing you for the evening. So when you come to your, to your room in the evening, the lights are down, it's sort of preparing you for the evening to sleep better. Wait, so that's why they're, uh, they're sick, uh, don't, don't come to our room, like, they're like, uh uh, no, that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, so do not disturb. Yeah. So housekeeping, that's the service they provide. They go and prepare your room, okay? So you could have those services, you could have other things. Uh, if you stay on those rooms, you might have, excuse me, uh, discounts. Uh, if you're staying in our club rooms, and in our suites, you have 10% off. Uh, our spa services or whatever else, right? So you can create that. Concierge, bonus points if you're one of their uh, loyalty programs, you know, Marriott, Bonvoy, and all of that, ITG rewards. So that, that can be part of these soft elements. And the best part of that, you can add in and change at any time. Cool. Okay. that. Questions? Yes? I don't have a question for what is wrong with the 
questions or talking about the different of the humans and, and their humans and the, the places and things that, that I mean, but one of the most important difference between humans and, and revenue management is was the cost. While we were looking at the revenue management, we were looking at the cost, but I do remember that you mentioned that was revenue management was not about cost management. It's more cost and more financial management thing. So yes. That was the part that the, it's a good question. Let me try to explain in a different perspective. Revenue, when you go through this process, this is one part of revenue, right? You anticipate your forecast. We covered about forecasting, okay? So when you do your forecasting, pricing is one part. So in revenue, you have the element for pricing. You have the element for channel. Cost is directly related to channel as it is to segmentation. And these elements only started to come with revenue, not back in the day with yield. Yield was essentially, I lift my rates when I see the market getting stronger. It's a reactive approach. This one here is proactive. You study the market. You look at customer behavior. You split the segmentation into different segments, groups, leisure, international, corporate, air crew. And you look at the patterns for each of the segments. You see what channels they are making bookings. Where are they coming from? Channel is the one that is most, is the closest to your cost management, if you want to say. For example, my best revenue performance on this day is selling 90 rooms. At an average, you sell a few rooms on this price, a few rooms on that price, plus you have your other business sitting here. So let's say you finish this day at $10,000 revenue. That's your optimal revenue that you believe you can achieve. <clears throat> you look at that and you go, can I achieve a better revenue and with a less cost? possible, which means the more I sell through my direct and my indirect channels. What are your direct channels? Direct channels. Your, your website. What else? Your phone, uh, phone call. Phone yeah, phone your reservation scheme, reservation. making phones, yeah, or front office, whatever. Okay. What else? Walking. Yeah. Your group reservations, the people that work in your reservations department, these are all your direct bookings, okay? It's directly the customer is talking straight to you. This one here? Yeah, most of the time, it's including commission and distribution fee. Hmm. What is that? Andrew, please stop me anytime with the time, okay? Yeah, all good. Distribution fees. This is your hotel. And in your hotel, you are connected to multiple channels. And from these channels, sometimes they are connected to more channels. I think I said this before, I hate distribution. You never know what's happening. It's a black hole. So the rate I'm selling here, I set up a rate tonight at $2.99. I can guarantee you, one or two steps down this track here, that rate is no more than $2.99. Okay. Because all these systems are interconnected. Let's say, I um, have direct connectivity with Facebook.com, with Expedia, with and then GDS, oh, let's put GDS here, now it gets interesting. GDS is there, what is GDS? Global distribution system. Who uses GDS? 
most of the time, travel agents. And when you walk into, especially corporate travel agents, if you go to, uh, when you work for a company, the company has a travel agent, those travel agents work mostly through GDS. It's like a, it's like an in internet or intranet. But these guys on the GDS will also provide rates to them, but they also get rates from this and from this. This purchase this. And then I sign agreement with wholesale agents. Sometimes they also get rates from here. And they can also get rates from here. It's a nightmare. It's really hard. At some point, the rate is going to start oh, well, for this guy to sell to this guy here. I give them a commission of, say, 10%. That guy will own sell to this guy here with a commission with a lower price of 8% and will keep 2%. But this guy owns sell. When the rate gets to this person here, it's no longer 2 dollars Said I'm, I'm, I was going to confuse you. Right? Your question around cost, it can it can get really to that level. And that's where you need revenue to stay focused on revenue generation. Have a sense of, hmm, I know it's better to sell direct. And I know if I sell indirect, not only I take commission, but Every time the booking goes to hand in hand, there is fees. This guy pays a dollar and fifty-four cents per booking. This guy will pay thirty-five cents US. This one here, they call the task fee. Because you go from my system to yours, I'm gonna charge it. I look after that system. The rent is no longer to and that's how you see so many reservations coming from these other places at a lower price. Oh, I can see a cheaper rate right there. Well, it's not meant to be. Sometimes it is. It doesn't mean you are creating a special for these channels. Why would you do so if you're paying more commission, which means less money? So if you're trying to protect the ten thousand dollars you have in revenue. You're trying to get the best profit, GOP, out of that. So you want to control your costs with as much as you can. If I can sell the entire hotel on direct, amazing. Worldwide, OTAs, you understand OTAs? Online travel agents? Worldwide today, they represent 30% of all business. Meaning 30% of your revenue you already, you started at 10,000, you started at 7,000. You already lost 30%. Some cases, 50% of the business depends on this channel here. Do you think it's a wise business decision? No? no? Depends. So you want to get more initiatives of the... You want to create incentives for them to book direct. But the OTAs have a lot of cash to create a strong loyalty system. I already know your name. I know what you like to do. Every winter, I know where you like to travel. I know your budget. I know where you go. I know the type of services you like to have. I know you have a family. They've got all that, so here you go, right in your inbox, just click there. Special for you, right? They have powerful systems. It's great. So it's that relationship of loving, hey, I need part of that. I'm not going to keep 90 rooms for their revenue by myself. I need that business, but I only want this much. I don't want that much, as long as it's incremental revenue. And I'm not losing my customer to them. Or at least I'm trying not to. 
We've got distribution coming up. Um, anyway. But